Have you ever played a popular game like Fortnite or Apex and after hundreds or thousands of hours you get a special skin that is really rare and only a few people have this skin and allows you to boast yourself above others in game as you record yourself smashing on others with an epic skin on your character or weapon which makes your trolls that much sweeter. Now, what if you could take that skin off of Apex and Fortnite and trade that skin on an open market and make some money? What if you could reach a certain rank where you could customize your gear and make completely unique skins just for you to play with in game? What if you were able to play a game so much that you could create a business by creating your own in game skins and selling them on an open marketplace? Hey everybody, Skylar here, and in this video, we are going to be talking about non fungible tokens or NFTs and what they are. Now before we get started about what non-fungible tokens are, let's talk about the difference between fungible and non-fungible. So essentially, fungible is something interchangeable, meaning one unit is always the same as another unit, like cold hard cash. One dollar in my pocket is worth one dollar in your pocket. It's the same. A barrel of oil is worth the same as a barrel of oil across the world. An ounce of gold is the same as an ounce of gold across the world. Same thing as a bitcoin is worth the same as a bitcoin. They are interchangeable and can be traded across evenly. Non-fungible means one of a kind unique items. There can be many of those items, but each one is unique, like a horse or a painting or a website or a crypto kitty. All the same objects essentially, but valued differently and looked at differently. Now that we have that out of the way, let's talk about what makes non-fungible tokens different from other tokens. A good example to use would be Ethereum. Ethereum has a token that's interchangeable and they also have an ERC20 token that allows other companies to build on their platform with interchangeable tokens. However, they don't necessarily have a token itself that is not interchangeable and it is unique. So they needed to create other tokens in order to do this. So a couple of new tokens were created on Ethereum called ERC721 and ERC115. Being built as an Ethereum standard allows it to have easier and quicker adoption in wallets, exchanges, games, apps, new projects, and more. The ERC721 was created by CEO of Engine Token back in June of 2017 by Dieter Shirley, who among other things was the co-creator of CryptoKitties. It was created to have a cryptocurrency that was unique and that there was only one unit in every ERC721 created and it's attached to a specific item forever. The first use case was CryptoKitties, where people could create and breed digital cats that each looked unique. One of those CryptoKitties was sold for 253 Ethereum, or around $110,000 at the time. The drawbacks to this though is it is expensive and it takes a very long time to do a transaction and it does bog down the Ethereum network. The ERC-1155 token was also created in 2017, which expanded on the ERC-721 and the ERC-20 token, and it allowed for fungible and non-fungible tokens to work on the same chain. This is where a game where Fortnite or Apex would come in. Some people would buy and some people would earn skins and potions and special weapons, etc. And those would be ERC-721 tokens. But you may want to buy some of those tokens with in-game gold, and that in-game gold might be ERC-1155. You would need to use both of them in unison in a situation like that. Now where can you buy and sell your own fungible and non-fungible tokens? Well, there are many answers to that question, but some of the largest marketplaces are places like Engine. Not the largest, but since they are the creators of NFTs, I thought I would mention them first. This marketplace may have actually been the very first Ethereum-based NFT marketplace to go online. Rarible offers minting and marketplace services for NFTs. The marketplace has its own governance token called Rari. The interface allows users to set royalties, meaning that they can receive shares from every transfer of ownership and offers tutorials to help its users. 
Super Rare is an NFT marketplace that deals with unique digital artwork. Its interface is simple, it has social profiles, a mobile app, live auctions, and extended payment options. Decentraland. Now, this is a place in my inner child's mind eye I see turning into a Ready Player One type situation, and I cannot wait until this technology advances. It's a marketplace that provides in-game items and plots that can give people permission to add or edit that item and includes record of location, owner, content, description, and access control. Decentraland holds its own smart contracts controlled by its own native token called Mana, which has a governance built in. Wax is a marketplace I've known since before Bitcoin. I remember seeing a Counter-Strike skin sell for over $60,000 and it was the first time I started gaining interest in digital ownership. Wax Skin still operates on waxpeer.com for Counter-Strike skins, but has other marketplaces as well, like wax.simplemarket.io, but more information can be found at their website at marketplace.wax.io. This is the token I personally hold and have been excited about for many years. Sandbox is a new game I'm adding in here because it will soon provide NFTs. This is a game that has been being built since 2011 and launched its token on Binance. This is a game I've been hearing about a lot on social media and a lot of people think it will be extremely successful. There are many games that have launched NFTs already and are, are more actively traded. Some of the big ones are Gods Unchained, Crypto Dozer, Mega Cryptopolis, and many more. CryptoKitties was one of the first major NFT projects that took off back in 2017. It was a game that created unique, breedable, collectible cats and you could trade and sell them on an open marketplace. This is a definite OG of the NFTs. Lastly, I want to bring up the largest NFT marketplace, which is OpenSea.io. They have over 12 million digital items across 700 assets selling anything NFT. Games, art, collectibles, virtual items, domains, and much, much more. Hey there, crypto friends. Thanks again for joining me. So today we're talking all about my top three play to earn NFT games. I've been talking about NFT gaming for years now, and the industry is finally starting to kind of pick up here. This play to earn format is definitely going to dominate the gaming industry in the next five to 10 years. And I'm excited that you guys here are early learning how to do this now and taking advantage of some of these early games, because not only do these games allow you to uh, invest your all your time and earn real world value, real world money, cash, if you want to, if you want to put in another word, right? But uh, they're actually good games. They're fun games that I enjoy playing and have great communities already. Okay, so let's go talk about my top three favorite blockchain games. And the first one we're going to jump into is one I've been playing for a very long time and is definitely one of my top games. It's called Gods Unchained. This is a TCG or trading card game or collectible card game, very similar to Hearthstone in style and Magic the Gathering. So if you're familiar with those games, you'll be very familiar with this game, but it allows you to play to earn. And I'm gonna show you exactly how that is. Let's go. Okay, so this is Gods Unchained. This trading card game is a lot of fun to play and all the cards are NFTs. So in contrast to games like Hearthstone or Magic the Gathering, you actually own these cards and you can trade them back and forth in their marketplace. And so uh, the way that works is, you know, as you level up in this game, you can see right now I'm level 97, you earn free packs. These packs are yours. So you can see my next pack is a neutral core rare pack. So as I play and I earn these packs, I can combine the cards together, which is called fusing in the forge, and then I could sell the cards in the marketplace and earn real world value this, and sell them for Ethereum. So if you want to then cash out that Ethereum, Ethereum you totally can. So uh, basically what it is, is you can uh, create your decks here in the workshop. You see I have a bunch of decks created, and uh, you can see your whole collection here in the collection tab, and then uh, you come here to the arena to go ahead and battle. So let's jump into a match and see what it looks like. All right, so here we are in a match and we have to pick your god power here first. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. And so you can see kind of the style of the game here. Um, and now we have our, uh, this is the uh, the actual mulligan uh, here. So this is like not too bad. Maybe I'll replace this one. Don't want that one. Oh, there we go, this is a good start. 
and I'm playing it against somebody who has the exact same god as me, so it's a little bit gonna be a little rough here. And so this is a little bit of the gameplay, and this is how it goes back and forth. You can see it's a pretty fast-paced uh, card game, and it has great artwork. In general, it looks amazing, uh, you know, and uh, the, the developers are always working on uh, the game itself, so a lot of fun here. So that was fun. So I, I hope you guys like Gods Unchained. Now let's jump into my second play to earn game, top play to earn game, and it's Axie Infinity. This game has absolutely blown up over the last few months, and for good reason. You can play and earn in this game in a very big way, and not only has their token that uh, backs the game taken off, so has the in-game token SLP, which is used uh, for breeding and for other things, but traded in the market as well. So you can earn big time in this game, and now while this game is not a free-to-play game like Gods Unchained, it does cost money to get started in this game. The potential for revenue is very high in this game. Let's go take a look at Axie Infinity. Okay, so here we are with Axie Infinity. These are cute little collectible axes and you use them to battle against each other. Uh, you have to have three axes for a team and these axes are not free. So unlike Gods Unchained, it is not a free to play game and uh, you have to buy axes and all the axes have different traits and some of them are rare and the traits determine what cards your axe you'll be able to have in battle. So you can see here, we're gonna go on a uh, we're gonna go on an adventure battle. So you can see some of the gameplay, and we're gonna start out here in the most basic world. I already have my Axie team loaded, and I'll show you exactly what it looks like here. So here we are versus the uh, the adventure mode, the computer, and you can see I get a bunch of different cards, and these cards determine uh, what I can uh, play here. And I have different energy levels for each card. You start off with four energy for adventure and it builds up uh, over time and each card costs a certain amount of energy. So you can see I've, I, I, now it's gonna play on screen, boom, we're gonna attack. And so the way you play to earn in this game is that as you uh, play these battles, you earn what's called SLP. These are smooth love potions, or I, I like to call them sexy love potions. And these uh, SLP can actually be traded in the marketplace. So they're like a, a cryptocurrency token that you can go and you can actually trade for Ethereum or other different currencies, uh, cryptocurrencies, and then cash off if you want to. So the play to earn element is really good here and you can actually earn a good amount of SLP per day, anywhere between maybe 150 to 200, depending on how many, how many hours you're playing. If you're playing a bunch of hours, you could really earn that maximum probably level of maybe like 200. Uh, SLP per day and uh, you know SLP is is one of those tokens that has exploded along with a, the AXS token which is the other underlying currency for the Axie Infinity game so with that uh, you know big team of Axies you could recoup uh, that initial cost that it costs to uh, get them and to get a team together uh, fairly quickly even if the markets keep going up like they are maybe even quicker all right let's go take a look at our third and final game those guys are cute right so let's get into the very final game that is one of my top games here in crypto, and that is Blanco's Block Party. This is one of the newest games in my top three list and has quickly risen to uh, number three here on my list uh, because it is so much fun to play. It's a multiplayer game, completely different than the other two games that do involve cards in different ways. And this game is very fun because uh, it's multiplayer in a kind of uh, Fall Guys-esque party style uh, you know, mini game. So uh, let's go take a look at Blanco's Block Party and what makes it so fun and, you know, and the play to earn elements. Let's do it. All right, so here we are in Blanco's Block Party, and these are Blanco's. You can see my Blanco here right in front, and a bunch of other people here who are just uh, getting going in the junction. The junction is where you start out. It's like the starting area, right? And this is where you get going so you can go and uh, jump in the mini games. And so you can see these little things I'm collecting are called vibes. These are a lot of fun and these are like power-ups essentially. I got my jet pack going here. And you can see the whole world from up here, which is pretty cool. It's very diverse. This starter area is like you can go explore. There's all kinds of things going on. Um, there's, you know, different NPCs. And then these are the main hubs right here. So these holes or portals are how you jump into the parties. And so the parties are how you earn uh, XP and level your character up and how you actually also play to earn. Because what you do is you level your character up and as you're leveling up, there's actually a thing called the party pass. And the party pass 
allows you to earn these really cool items like wearables for your character or new Blancos themselves, which you could then sell in the marketplace for real world value. Once again, you're playing to earn. Now this is the newest of uh, my top play to earn games and it hasn't been out as, as long as the others. So they're still getting going on some of the marketplace uh, features. But right now, I think this is one of the most solid games out there and their play to earn model is I think a really great one. And it mirrors what you've seen in a lot of traditional video games with the whole season pass, right? So we're on season zero right now. And you can see I've earned a bunch of new things. So I've, I've earned some actual Blanco's bucks, which are in-game currency. And I could use those to buy more accessories on the store and then resell them if I wanted to. In particular, a lot of them sell out. And so you get to a point where like, well, they, there, there's no more left to be able to get on the store. So you have to buy them from somebody in the marketplace if you want them. So let's go take a look at uh, what a party looks like in Blancos. These are this is a finding a party right now, and these are mini games that are very similar to, like I said, the kind of a Fall Guys esque feel. And there's a couple of different types of them. So you're either running in a race, maybe you're collecting those little uh, lightning bolts called Vibes, or maybe you're in a shooter, and it's a free for all or a team. Uh, versus team shooter. So there you go. Those are my top three favorite play to earn NFT games where you can earn real world value, uh, cryptocurrency that you can convert into USD if you want, and they're tons of fun. These games are fun and you can actually monetize your time by playing them. So the first one that we have here is uh, Currency Works. So um, Currency Works, it, I mean, they actually pride themselves as um, current, uh, redefining how companies can digitize and monetize their asset. So I'm going to put the link to the description in the description below. Definitely go check out their website, read about the company and what they do. So when I was doing this video, uh, the stock is currently sitting at about three dollars and forty six cents. So if I go back to one day chart, you see it's just been slowly uh, moving up. Uh, if you go to a month. Look at this, uh, just back on uh, March 4th, this stock was trading at $1. And then this crave of uh, NFTs just, just went uh, berserk and see how this thing just squeezed up. It's now sitting at $3.46. And again, if the momentum continues, uh, I'm seeing the price point for this one would probably go all the way to like $10. So this would be one that you can definitely uh, benefit from. And again, guys, these things are super uh, volatile. So the volatility here is insane. So be careful. If when you're trading this, I want you to go in there with a plan and have a stop loss because um, if Moss can tweet something about it and this whole thing collapses. So you just be careful. So the second one I have here is called Take On Art. So this one again does provide an opportunity for people to own uh, NFTs. So you can go check out their website. Um, just so you know that that particular one is. It's a Chinese company. The ticket symbol is TKAT. Go check them out. Uh, when I, I went through the website, it's a little bit flimsy for my taste. Um, it looks really, really amateurish. And I think that for a company that's traded on the NASDAQ, you can hire um, some good designers and get your website up to date and make it really look good. And I'm going to point something out that I, I saw here that really kind of uh rub me the wrong way i'll point that out for you guys shortly but and th this one just uh today also went crazy so if you see here uh this thing was trading early morning under six dollars uh, when the market opened and then it just kind of squeezed all the way all day to a high of about 24 dollars and 20 cents before pulling back and sitting at 20 22 dollars after hours so again uh looking into thursday this thing might squeeze all the way to 35, uh, just based on the way it's been moving. See, that was 277%. So this thing might squeeze all the way to 35 before pulling back. So I want you to definitely keep an eye um, on this one. So uh, the third one here is um, our Oriental Culture Holding. So the ticket symbol here is OCG. So uh, here's what I said I wanted to point out for you guys to kind of take a look, right? So if we go here, take a look at this website. Um, look here at the bottom. This is the website for OCG Group. Then now let's switch back to Taekwon, um Art. You could take a look at the website. Do you see anything similar? I see everything. It looks it looks about the same. Look at the image in the background here. And then when I go to OCG, look at the image in the background. 
pretty much the same. It's just like copy and paste. It looks like it's the same uh, company that is um, running the, the take on holding that's also uh, doing the OCG here. So um, again, guys, these are Chinese based companies. Uh, we've we've known a lot of Chinese companies to be you know acting a little bit flimsy. So be careful with this one. Take advantage, make some money out of it, but always make sure you have a stop loss in case things start to go south, just so you can protect yourself. Then the next one again at number four that I want to bring out to you guys is uh, ZK International. So this one, um, definitely, if you can see here, they say they provide clean water through their innovative, high quality water piping, but their subsidiary, this is the one that's going to be getting. So their subsidiary X Sigma um, is actually the one that's going into non-fungible token market, uh, which is projected to be about 1.3 billion in 2021. Again, this is one that you want to put on your watch list. Um, the ticket symbol here is ZKIN. Um, and again, this one too, it, it's just the same. If you can see all these stocks move at the same time. So um, you can see that it started here at about under seven dollars and then throughout the day squeeze all the way to a high of about uh, nine dollars and, and 21 cents before pulling back and then sitting here after hours still um, over nine dollars. So definitely something that you want to keep an eye on. So, guys, um, I, again, I wanted to bring this up to you so that you guys are aware of, of some of the, uh, the opportunities that we have out there. So. NFT is now trending. A lot of people are taking advantage of it. So if you're trading, um, again, yeah, you have two opportunities to benefit from the trend. You can benefit from actually creating and selling your own NFTs, which are digital assets, or you can actually create, um, or you can actually cr trade companies that um, operate in that space. Again, we went through three of the companies here. Uh, ticket symbol CWRK. That was the first one. Second one was ticket symbol TKAT. Um, the third one was ticket symbol OCG. And then uh, the last one here was ticket symbol ZKIN. Again, I mentioned that um, CWRK is over the counter. This one, you cannot buy it on Robinhood, on Weibo, on M1 Finance, on SoFi. Most of the uh, platforms that people use right now are called millennial traders. Use, you're not going to be able to buy uh, over-the-counter stocks. You'd have to go to Vanguard, Fidelity, TD Ameritrade, E-Trade to be able to buy um, over-the-counter stocks. And some of them, you still have to pay commission to buy them. So I just want to make sure that you guys are aware of that so that is uh some of the stuff that i wanted to bring out to you guys just so you guys are aware um again some of the plays in the nft space so we can take advantage of this momentum and hopefully make some money together so do your due diligence don't be a greedy savage and stay motivated